Here's an interesting question. How can we find or wayfind within the haze? So those sort of deeper features of modernity are, uh, you know, they're constantly hazing our, our, our sight, even though we can't see them anymore, like a fish in water, you know, notice the water. What's the, what's, what can we do about that? What's the deal with that stuff? Well, one of the good things you can do is deep listening. Uh, that's a very important feature of a lot of uh, Aboriginal cultures here in Australia, sometimes called Dadiri in certain parts of Australia. And deep listening is a sort of tuning in to the cosmos, more or less. The cadence, the rhyme, the timbre of silence and stillness, which are kind of a bit of an opposite of um, simulation and satisfaction and speed. Yielding to mystery to be to be able to be a conduit for wisdom from the cosmos. Metaphor, intuition, imagination. Rather than only seeking comfort, choice, convenience, control, closure, or certainty. So deep listening is about discernment of patterns, weavings, and braidings of life's irreducible wholeness. Instead of the literal, linear, and logical of dissected, flattened box reality, which can be what we have around here. There's also a kind of flow chart, which, you know, are very modern things that we can use. Attend to and be present. Still internal chatter, or at least sort of forcing thing, be aware of it. Sense into subtleties. It's about, it's not a meditation because it's sort of like, one of the things we do really badly and what primal people did really well is just pattern recognition, really, pattern um, emergence of their environment, and of our environment that we're in. This is a paying attention exercise to the patterns of the world. Sense into subtleties, respond with humility and curiosity, anticipate resulting ripples and responses. That means you've become very good at... So primal peoples or Indigenous peoples actually uh, live in very predictable worlds and the reason is because they are very good at patterns basically so they can predict where their world will go but importantly that is very different from controlling the world see predicting the world is not controlling the world because you understand what's coming you're not making it happen as such there is other aspects of that, magic and sorcery, where you can do a bit of that making. But anyway, that's a bit of, of a different story. So wayfinding guidelines. Well, that sounds useful, doesn't it? Uh, a relational equilibrium of autonomy among interdependent beings, free to choose and act while remaining immersed in deep connection and obligation with each other, within layered, nested, distributed authority and leadership. Oh, that sounds like primal societies, indigenous societies. Relational autonomy, I call that for short. That's something to probably come back to in the slides when I send them out. Some of my stuff is a little bit dense. Um, apologies for that. Eccentricity, distinctiveness, singularity with context sensitivity. Yes, this is... Uh, so primal... Cultures and societies are very much about not so much the whole shallow embrace of difference through identity politics that we do in modernity, but proper proper eccentricity and distinctiveness and weirdness are welcome and celebrated. And primal peoples are very much about context sensitivity. So once again, not the inherently oppressive abstracted rules of modernity, the bureaucracies of modernity. Uh, quite intense, I find, these days. And rules are inherently violent because they fail to account for context. They're too abstract. They apply too, too generally. Another important feature of, the, uh, you know, exiting the haze, clearing the haze, really is uh, all about becoming Indigenous and primal. Uh, there's a balance blurring between the literal and metaphorical in primal societies. So we, we don't really so much have that clear distinction between what is real and what is imaginal. That those, those blur together. 
as does different forms of time, being and becoming, and place and time. Often there's one word for place and time in Indigenous cultures, and there's very good reasons for that because time is basically a place-based experience. Mm. 